Good afternoon to all, <clears throat> and thanks for also for Sara to make the, the the difficult part of uh, explaining why it's important to deal with the archaeometry of rock art pigments. Uh, in fact, this is, we start this uh, this research in 2010 with the group science project that uh, Per Luigi was the the, the co principal coordinator of this project, and, I, and in that time I was a uh, uh, scholarship guy that was uh, making the, the geology uh, PhD and <clears throat> I applied for this for this project and we start to working together in this rock art archaeometry study. Uh, up, uh, as Sarah said, this is a multidisciplinary uh, uh, approach and based on, ar on archaeology. The questions that we try to solve are mainly uh, the archaeologists' questions that they that they have uh, related with paintings, relating with engravings, the style, the 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 provenience of materials, the constitution of these uh, uh, pigments, and uh, whatever. Uh, of course, dealing with prehistoric art, but we use also photography, the basis of geology. I'm geologist in this case. Uh, and we use also the, the geography and topography of the, the landscape and the sites and we deal with all the di different uh, disciplines. Of course, we, we, we also uh, joined the biology because many of these uh, sites have uh, uh, biological colonizations like lichens and, uh, and uh, other uh, fungi and, and other biological uh, materials. And the physics and chemistry that, in fact, is the base of the archaeometry uh, processes that we'll talk in this uh, in this presentation. So this is a multi multidisciplinary approach for uh, the rock art studies that Sarah already explained uh, some examples. Uh, mainly in this presentation, in our study since 2010, we are we still developing this uh, this kind of uh, uh, protocol. It was not. Uh, not so common to make these uh, uh, studies in, uh, in the specific in rock art. Yeah? We, we know the, the studies in the art, in the, in the modern art, in the, in the, that are in museums, but in rock art was not so very well applied. We have some studies in the beginning of the, of the, the discoveries of, the, of, the, um, of the, the rock art, but it was generalized that the pigments are made by ochre, and it was not so developed or so applied to rock art. So uh, in the last uh, decade, more or less, uh, also the, these, uh, these laboratories of chemistry and physics start to look to rock art and we make a collaboration around the world with, with different uh, laboratories that, that use these, these methods that we, we use to apply for specific in pigments. Here today in this presentation, we will mainly talk about the archaeometry of pigments uh, in rock art. We, you can we, in the engravings we can classify the, the 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 substrate, the rock, but we don't have anything more to to characterize. Even if you in the recent uh, 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 times, we could start also dating uh, engravings by the calcite that is over. But we speak a little bit. Uh, further in this presentation. So, mainly in general, what we use the methods, uh, the archaeometric methods that we use for these analysis of pigments are the optical microscopy. We use microscopes to see these uh, very tiny samples that we could keep from uh, from the rock art. Now, as you imagine, we cannot damage uh, entire uh, figure to see what is what is uh, made. So we need to to to, to keep very very tiny. Uh, uh, small samples. I have some examples in this presentation. Uh, we use, of course, mix, the microscopy, the general microscopy, to 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 see the, the particularities of this sample and to manage manage the sample. For example, for the other um, uh, methods that we apply, Raman spectroscopy was the the the, the first um, apparatus that we use in collaboration with the Ferrara University. <coughs> We, we start to apply the Raman spectroscopy to identify the, the main the mineralogical components of these pigments that, that we collect. And in the beginning, in the first uh, project, we have just four sites in Portugal and Spain, two in Portugal and two in Spain. And 
uh, with the collaborations with network with this huge network that we have we still um, uh, joining sites for uh, on these um, on this research and it's very important because some some questions that i tell you in the beginning still arise of these we see if you start to analyze a lot of sites some questions start to to appear in in a regional thing in an, in a worldwide and now with sara presented the the, Neal, the neanderthal question for example so all these uh, all these uh, new questions still arise when we start to get some data the x-ray flor uh, uh, florence uh, X spectroscopy give you give us the components of these pigments the iron the calci the calcium the uh, uh, the, the chemical elements that compose the, the the pigment and you use also the scan for specific uh, parts of these samples to see for example the the processes if they suffer some grinding if they were heated we can see with the, the scan the scanning electron microscopy we can see some of these uh, particular features this is very useful to see when when we for example we have a lucky to have a good sample and we find some organic uh, uh, material inside the scanning uh, the sam is also very useful to see the, which kind of fi uh, fiber fiber was there and uh, it's very useful to have a, a, a good image of what we identify with the other uh, methods uh, more recently, we, we in IPT here in Portugal, we they they bought this uh, FTIR, this Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy machine, and we start to apply also to to the pigments this new this new new in IPT this new methodology uh, that give us the the possibility to identify the 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 mineral composition but also the the, the organic part that be, is very is very difficult to identify. Uh, uh, in in pigments conservation issues for for sure but is also related with the, the data, database of these apparatus that in general they don't exist the ram and the the, the, the x-ray for sense don't give us okay this is a particular uh emetite or a particular uh, uh, uh specific uh, um, substance we joined to these uh, to these methods also the absolute dating and in particular by uranitorio as we are talking about the, the the covering surfaces the cover layers that cover the pigments and in each we sara presented the these two caves that we work in a first start but we deal in a with a lot of uh, different contexts in uh, rock shelters in uh, open air uh, sites in spain uh, here in portugal we have also rock shelters but in limestone areas so with uh, also in granite areas we have paintings so we we we, we uh, uh, try to adapt all these methods to these different contexts that have uh, rock art painting rock art and uh, in the very very recent and this is more or less a novelty uh, we we also start to try to apply the, the identification of the DNA in pigment. We are also in collaboration with the Max Planck Institute to try to apply to pigment this new this methodology. So I have just some examples to resume and thanks to Sarah that explain the difficulties that we have uh, uh, before arriving to catch samples. Uh, she explained very well all the process that we need to identify the panels, to recording the panels, to, to make the, the identification of the question. Now we arrive in the, for example, in the Skoral Cave and we don't sample everything. We need to, to know first which kind of doubts already exist to catch specific uh, uh, samples to determine, okay, this, this pigment is the same of the other panel. These, uh, uh, P this uh, color of this pigment is different it should be the same received so the, in the, the when we arrive to the cave we should have already the, the questions uh, to to try to solve and already Sara already present we are dealing with this kind of art node sometimes I arrive in the panels that they say and I cannot see the, 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 where is the art because they already make the the, the study that Sarah present that some of the panels, for example, when we enter in the in the uh, in the site in the painting rock rock site 
painting in the painting rock rock shelter uh, i have a difficulty to identify the, the the paintings so we use also the, the all the work that uh, sarah and the, the archaeologists do to see the, where is the specific art and where where can i try to to catch a good sample for example to analyze the pigments so the sampling method in fact is the much much accurate as possible as you saw in the photos we use gloves we try to ever touch the the the, the panels with our hands and with our clothes and our things because as said and as plastics for example because everything that we did to the to the walls to the wall paintings will be uh, at least became a, a traces of this kind of cont contamination and now for example with the collaboration of uh, max plan if you are dealing with the NEA, of course, if we touch in the wall, our DNA start to be uh, attached to the to the walls. So we need to 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 use all these uh, 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 hygienic uh, way of collecting samples. Of course, we use the, also the ependorms, sterilized ependorms. We use the tungsten uh, uh, scalpel to keep a good sample, and sometimes we we use also the the. Mi portable microscopy to to see very well which kind of sample we want to 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 keep of course some of some of the caves for example are not able to have all these spaces to use all these apparatus so usually is very very accurate the the shoes of the sample so the the objectives of the sampling method is collected from the figurative motives uh, to encompass the, the diverse typologies, for example, the diverse type kinds of art that we have that, that are, sometimes they are overlapping, sometimes don't. The, all the, the those questions that Sara present related with with the, the, the what we found in uh, these kind of sites. Of, of course, we need to take also in account the variation of the pigment coloration sometimes they seem all red in general because is the the what our eyes could be uh, could see very well and also with this stretch what 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 get out it's the the, the red from the the iron oxide so the, the these different use of the red we should take in account because probably they have or different different kind of conservation or different preparation uh, pigment of the pigments. We should, of course, as said, Sarah already explained, also be authorized to to keep samples. Now we never enter in a, in a cave or in a rock a rock shelter to sampling without any uh, official authorized. And we should have a strategy, uh, depending of the national or international sampling. We use the the European. In the past, we were used were applying the the American Institute of Conservation uh, Methodologies, but was created a recent one from the Euro European states. So in this moment, we are using this uh, kind of uh, guidance for sampling that are those that I already explained using scalpels, don't touch approach. And when we try to choose the good sample, we use, of course, the, 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 the parts of the figure that are already uh, um, in the borders or in the cracks or uh, in the specific the objective is damage the minimum the with the, the sample process when it's possible uh, uh yes uh, the the sample the, when is possible the sample collection must be undertaken using non-contact ethical extractions and is the, the same that i was explaining of course, all the record that we make also for uh, uh, archaeometry is based in the record that uh, Sara present. Where are the samples? Where in each panel? Which color? So we did to this kind of uh, uh, the, 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 the fold the, the sheets. All this information uh, that they already prepare for us. This example, for example, is in the Dolmen do Soto megalithic monument, monument, and we already prepare before entering the dolmen we already prepare the the the, the areas where we'll, we were sample where we will sim sample because we already know that we want to sample the white pigment the red pigment the black pigment and in each figures because some of them were 
also overlapping uh, uh, engraving. So the, uh, the the processing almond zone for sampling was very, really easy in the opposite of the recording that Sara presented. And uh, in general, the, each sample must weight between 10 and 100 milligrams. This is, of course, relate, relate, uh, related with the evolution of the techniques of the, the laboratories. Uh, a few years ago, 20, <clears throat> 20, 30 years ago, they need a, a huge quantity of uh, uh, pigment and also for dating, it, would, it was the same, for example. And um, nowadays, they, the, with the improvement of the technology, we we could work with a very, very tiny sample and obtaining, obtaining a lot of results. Of course, when we try to use uh, diverse uh, apparatus, né? if you use Raman, if you use Steer, if you use SAM, if you want to make uh, absolute dating, we, 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 need, we need to deal with a, a bigger sample as possible. And, and I, I remember again, not damaging the, the painting. Uh, we, and we tried to extract the, in the areas of the panel or where we saw the, the pigment or as using the distretch, we can, we can confirm that it in fact is the, pin, the, the pigment there. And we tried to choose these fractures and niches uh, where we, cannot, we can keep easily the, the sample and destroy, damage uh, uh, less. Normally, these features and needs are considered, are considered the, the good uh, point of extractions from the ethical point of view. Of course, we, we depend on which question we want to solve, but these are uh, the best places to extract pigments because we reduce the impact of the sample in a, in a rock art panel. I imagine if you have a beautiful, and I, you have a beautiful horse uh, painting. You cannot put the scaffold in the middle of the horse, and that will become uh, with a hole. So we choose we choose the the areas where the impact will be the minimum. Each sample must be obtained uh, uh, in the sterilized uh, obtained using the tungsten scaffold, of course sterilized in all samples, and put inside the the, the Zeppendorf the mycocentrifuge mycocentri tubes to use uh, to transport and to to uh, use after in the labs, and uh, um, the choice of the specific sites for sample is related with the pictographic interest, with the pigment available, and the minimum risk of damage, as I was telling. We also uh, record everything in uh, in these kind of sheets. We also did all the information, as Sarah explained, related with the what we want the question, what is the color of the question, what is the quantity, what are the photos that we take after, before and during the, the process of sampling. So all the, the information and imagine uh, Sara present two caves in this first art project, but we are dealing since 2010 with these uh, uh, rock art, uh, rock shelters in the uh, Iberian Peninsula. We did the sites in Ethiopia, in Brazil, in uh, Israel, in uh, Sardinia, so we start to have a lot, a lot of information, and of course, this uh, uh, proper uh, register uh, is uh, very important. And here is an example of the a sample that we collect, for example, and then seeing the image of the of the left and the image of the right before and after is uh, is very if i don't have the, the the dot there is very difficult to understand that i keep a sample uh, there and another example here was a sample for dating so in for dating they need a more quantity of this uh, calcite so we try to keep this cauliflower and of course in the in the in the panel you could see in a press sample in post sample the difference of the sample that we keep. So, mainly, the, some questions related with this pigment analysis are the association with the archaeological context. For example, these paintings were made by the, the human occupation that were found by the lithics, the bones, and all the cultural implements that are uh, uh, excavated and found in the, in the caves. This could, could be one of the questions. The geographic area 
de, for example, the schematic and the, uh, the, the, the paleolithic art in general, they are related in, in uh, Iberian, they are spread around the world. So this kind of questions is all pigment uh, analysis uh, results could also start to, to solve some of these questions. The coloration, so pigment, red pigment is the same uh, uh, everywhere, is, uh, they are different recipes. This kind of uh, the, the overlappings, for example, they use the same uh, uh, pigment, they, they use the same receipt, they use the same techniques, they use why they change typology using the same site. And of course, the, as Sarah also uh, focus, if you have opportunity, we try to, to apply the absolute chronology of this. Uh, as you know, the main, mainly the rock art is mainly characterized by stylistic point of view, but with this uh, new approach, this uh, absolute uh, uh, dating could, could give also new data to these uh, rock art stylistic studies and uh, cultures. So we, uh, we could identify, as I tell you, with Sam, for example, these different techniques. We have a, a site here near in the border of uh, Portugal and Spain that is Puerto Rock. And we find in the panel different kind of uh, applied uh, uh, techniques. They use brushes, they use the fingers, they use uh, they use just dots. They have compound figures that of they probably they use another kind of uh, instrument. So uh, we with Sam we 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 could identify these these different um, uh, uh, techniques of applying pigments. Of course, different colors. For example, here, here we, we have white uh, bars, we have black dots, we have red pigments, red figures, orange ones. So all these different colors and use uh, are very useful because probably when we start to analyze, they give us different kind of results. <coughs> Sorry. The overlapping of figures. Here is in a Montfrag uh, uh, National Park, and they have this, this, this all the the rock, the mainly rock art that is was identified is red, but they have this different uh, kind of uh, uh, use, probably may, uh, related to conservation, probably related with different kind of uh, pigments, different kind of techniques. So it, all these questions are in the base of the archaeometric uh, process. Here, I present you some of the apparatus <laughs> that we use in Ferrara, in uh, IPT, also in England. Uh, we, we, uh, now I, we are working with the labs in China and uh, in Canada. So all the, the, the apparatus that we use, the Raman, the microfluorescence X-ray, the SAM, the microstratigraphic analysis is very useful. And we use also the microscopic, uh, optical microscopy and stereomicroscopy to saw these uh, uh, beautiful microstratigraphies that we sometimes we we could prepare and uh, as i tell you the ftir that is the uh, top uh, right uh, new that was bought by ipd recently the, i was telling about this microstratigraphy but here is an example we have the we get the lucky to find these uh, small plaque with two uh, uh, fingerprints painted fingerprints and of course it was already collapsed of the panel and we we could have the we have the opportunity to make this microstatigraphic analysis of the the surface of this uh, sample and as you saw uh, in we could analyze the the rock in the substrate that was the the, the gray part of the of this the, the small layer that you saw more or less uh, yellow is the, the concretion, the natural concretion that uh, the rocks uh, win with the, the erosion, with its position, with the biological colonization. And then in the left part of this, you saw a small red layer. That is the pigment. And in fact, this is the, 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 the finger, the part of the finger of the red fingerprint that is there and we we also saw in microscopy observation that have some red dots in the top of this layer and this uh, national park uh, 
uh, as uh, Iberian Peninsula in general have a lot of fires. So some of these charcoal we uh, were attached to the to the wall during the fires. So we were also able to identify these in the in the surface of these um, of these uh, uh, painting. The substrate the the rest of the sample that you saw is the resin that we use to polish all these all this area um sorry uh, as i will not be extending and using but just to showing the some of the expect the specter that we get when we an an analyze this kind of uh, uh, sample samples this is a, a seems a huge sample but in in fact is a, just a 10 micrams of a, of a sample that we analyzed by Raman spectroscopy. The objective is to identify the chemical mineralogical composition, so the minerals and the, uh, the elements that are that make this pigment uh, that we identify, the production process, if you are able to, uh, the si uh, subsequent chemical reactions of course, the alteration of these products, the the the, the accretions that we saw, like the, the charcoal that I present you in the last slide, and also the degradation process that naturally occur in the walls, in the, the pigments, in the in the in the sites in general. The X-ray uh, fluorescence uh, uh, is a non-destructive. It's a, it's a huge word, non-destructive multi-elemental analysis, because usually we could apply in a portable way. But in fact, here, yeah, uh, for rock art is uh, not so useful, useful because if you apply to a wall, for example, in a cave that that have some paintings that we could see, but if they are covered with uh, layers of calcite, what these apparatus will uh, uh, identify is just the layer of calcite and don't give you the the real composition of the of the pigment that, that is inside the, the the wall so this is useful when we keep the sample and we we identify the quantities of the iron the quantities of uh, aluminium and the, the other element chemical elements that we that compose the, the sample the scan as i tell you uh, could give us the 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 information of the type of grains for example these could be it, we could see if the, the grain is the as the natural uh, form of was grinded of if was it then is alterated from different things, and also the identification of these organic uh, fibre, fibers that uh, is very easy to identify with sand. Uh, when we we have these uh, suspicious of uh, organic component as is very difficult to identify because preservation, because we don't know which kind of organic materials was used, and we are not able to identify very well with RAM and with, with all these apparatus, the organic part we use, but if we have some doubt sometimes, we use the gas chromatography uh, for identification of these organic compounds that usually are used as binders. In the uh, bibliography, some some of these kind of uh, uh, binders uh, were tried to identify. I remember that was a were a publication that they tried to identify the egg, the the animal uh, glues, and the the milk. That, but in fact, in general, we don't we are not able to identify these kind of things. And but in um in a, a cave in a, a great britain we we also find this kind it was a cave that was really vandalized they have a lot of uh, vandalism we found the lipsticks uh, material we found a lot of recent uh, sprays but we are we are also able to identify some of the organic components some fatty acids that were in the in the in the composition um the FTIR is uh, the, the the new apparatus that we joined to all this to all this protocol and is useful to to get the elemental composition of the of the sample to uh, have an increased sensitivity of the analysis and is also uh, able to detect the organic part that usually Raman and the 
uh, Elish's RF and Sam are not able to identify very well. If we don't know that is there, it's very difficult to, to identify. With FT, it's very useful, and I, I think I get, got some examples, for example, how to interpret this spectra that, in fact, what get out of the machine is this result with the peaks and the numbers, and we try to, with the uh, bibliography, with a database, uh, try to recognize, recognize this association of uh, um, compounds. This is another some example. Uh, this is an example of the Maltravieso, the, the hand, and we find, for example, this uh, Celadonite type that is kind of a, a micas, uh, and also this kind of elements related with the, the hand stencil that side. And in the end, when we, we join all the information from Rama, from Elishes RF, from FTIR, from grass chromatography, we, in fact, we have the general composition of the, the pigment and alteration uh, products and the substract uh, information also because we we deal with all these big data of the all the, the methods so the although the characterization of inorganic pigments is completely is relatively well developed around the world and in the last decades a lot of people start to make uh, identification of uh, uh, pigments the, the, the characterization of the bindings in the prehistoric pigments is still uh, extremely difficult related with the sampling age. Yeah. The, the samples are old, so the organic material don't become preserved. And also the type of material that, would, that was used that uh, probably react and start to degradate very, uh, very fast. As they are from the organic orange, they are very difficult to identify with the techniques that uh, we use in the pigment characterization. So we need to improve also this uh, protocol to found new, new, new specific um, organic binders. And in fact, we we are trying to have some success in Brazil, for example. We in dealing with more recent kind of art. Yeah. We are not talking about Paleolithic art, this, are, this is Holocene uh, art. Uh, and we have the, the analysis of the white and the grey pigments in this, uh, uh, in this site that was Buqueirão da Pedra Furada and Toca do Paraguay, that is a, another rock shelter nearby in Piauí uh, region, in Serra da Capibara. And we found the, the mineralogic, we found, we identified the mineralogic composition of the uh, as a clay and the gypsum. And we find these peaks of organic components pro probably derived from plants that they they joined in the preparation of these uh, receipts. Uh, these binders are difficult to characterize. We could uh, identify the, the specific uh, uh, kind of, it could be a plant, but we don't identify each plant. But for sure, this can be considered part of the operation, the operating chain, the chain operatoire, the preparation of the pigment pre preparation processes. Now I merged three languages and I became <laughs> confused. But uh, in fact, in the last uh, uh, years, uh, some of people start to identify, identify also plant cells in black pigments, like Mister uh, uh, um, Lopes Montalvo in 2017, and also in uh, Portugal with uh, 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 Butencur and Oliveira, they also find some kind of uh, aquatic plants, like algae in a megalithic uh, uh, monument in the north of Portugal. We have a lot of case studies, as I tell you. So this is Bancarense de la Serena, is a conjunction of three caves in a, a quartzite crest uh, in Spain, in, um, uh, in Spain, <laughs> nearby Portugal, and is an example of all the, the panels that uh, that were treated by Sar and Hippolyte and the, the team of uh, archaeologists. And we we went there and we sample the specific they have all these diverse kind of pigments, different figures, different uh, overlappings and different uh, uh, colors. And we, we sample the three caves. So we, this is the more or less the final 
uh, result of applying Raman, Steer, and um, um, Sam, and we find these these beautiful results in Bacarensia. Some of them are made by ochre, eh? hematite, uh, and uh, uh, clays. But we we start to identify some organics in these kind of pigments. Of course, the black pigments usually are made by manganese, but we are lucky also to have the charcoal in these uh, uh, pigments that we are useful. Uh, yard, they are useful for uh, absolutating uh, the carbon carbon fourteen uh, approach. Um, in uh, Los Butres, that is uh, nearby, uh, is in the same region with the same kind of stylistic, uh, schematic uh, rock art. Uh, we find we also sampling the, the sample, and we we found also the red ochre and fatty acids in the that could be the um, uh, join that could be the result of the joining animal fat in this preparation of these pigments and in fact they were related with more red more dark red fingertips uh, instead of the other uh, red uh, part of the figures and we found also burned amber that in fact is a, a earth that was burned that um, that was applied also in the in the in the wall so we have a, a problem related with the FTIR because we don't have this database. So here in Masson, we have a, a, a quite large team of experimental archaeology. We, so we start to create this database of prehistoric pigments using raw materials uh, uh, spread in Iberian Peninsula uh, and also joining uh, all these features that will start to be identified, like animal fat from different kind of animals, eggs, milk, uh, all the stuff that was recorded in in ethnography and uh, also in uh, uh, bibliography. We try to to make this huge to construct this huge database to be a reference for a steer for prehistoric pigments. All these uh, um, publications are accessible in a research guide. My uh, uh, or Per Luigi. So, if you are have curiosity to see these uh, these papers, they they are all accessible in that time. Um, in Bancarencia, as I tell you, we have this uh, lucky of fi finding the the black dots. So we we start to make the to apply the absolute dating. So in the near future, we could have get some some good results or not because we are dealing with very very tiny quantity of this back pigment so a question that uh, start to appear that i also tell in the beginning is analyzing these different rock shelters in iberian peninsula we start to see some some uh, coincidences some uh, same receipts, the same kind of colors. So they are, uh, since both Los Butres and Becarencia are in the same region, for example, they contain the same figures from the same chronological spectrum. And in fact, they have the same mixture of ingredients uh, to use in the same type of figures, finger trips. And this caused some alarm in our heads to that sounds to be a possibility that a real receipt uh, of pigment was used in that region. So we, we should compare now with the other sites that we were analyzing and we still analyzing. And if you have these, uh, these uh, same receipt in the same region, we, we could also enlarge the study and start to comparing it with other countries, with other kind of art to see, to, to get these, these uh, this knowledge, this human knowledge, how they use the, the rock art, the chain operatoire of rock art. In Brazil, we have uh, we has, we have also these uh, these results that um, we keep from uh, this this uh, panel in the from these two panels in these two sites, and uh, <clears throat> in fact they are this is a limestone uh, uh, walls, and in fact they have also the the lime the calcite over so we start also to apply to absolute dating uranium thorium absolute dating for these uh, two sites 
So, finishing uh, the multiproxy analysis of the archaeometric studies allow us to characterize the components of the pigments, mineralogical and the organic part. Uh, sometimes, if you are uh, in a specific region, we identify the raw materials that were used. And for example, I don't speak and will present, but in Angola, uh, we find these, these specific pigment that probably was collected 30, 30 kilometers from, far from the, from the site. And uh, it was related with the composition of pigment and the proximity of the, the raw material that uh, they could use. Uh, identify the possible production process, the heating process, for example, the, the smashing and the and the grinding process of the pigment could be identified. The application techniques, if it was applied with a finger, with a, a, a stick, with a, um, a tampon, all the techniques we could also identify with this multiproxy. Apply absolute chronology uh, to these kind of uh, paintings related with the cover, the layers of uh, calcite, the oxalates, the organic components of pigments, and the, all the new stuff that could be uh, identified in pigments. And of course, apply conservation measures. And starting again in the beginning, remember, and I, I finish like uh, Sarah finished, try ever touch in the walls, in the painting walls, because everything that we uh, did to the walls will become at least uh, uh, traces of that and after we identify. And thank you.